Hello, my name is Anton and I'm Chief Architect at ProphecyLabs.com. ProphecyLab is AI-based cloud cost optimization platform. And today I want to show you how it's easy to register within the platform and how to add your first account within it. So first of all that you need to do, you need to create your account. You're clicking on sign in, then you're clicking on sign up. After that you will need to uh, enter your details like a full name, company name, password, your a business phone number, your email, and so on. After that, you'll be able to log into the system. I already have an account, so just logged in. Once you're logged in, the first thing that you need to do is basically to add your um, cloud account. How to do that? Really simple. You're going to Account Manager. After that, you click on Add New Account, and you have two options, which is AWS and Google Cloud. Google Cloud is coming soon. It's going to be released really soon. So let's add AWS account. I'm clicking on AWS account and I have two different options. First option is access key and the second option is the account role. So I can use my own account and it's access key and a secret key or I can create a role uh, and then use this role in order to connect to my AWS account. I will be using the access key. So click on access key. Uh, after that you will need to add the access key, secret key, and you will need to add the account name, which is optional. This is a display name of your uh, cloud account within our platform. Uh, if you don't know how to create an account, what kind of, what kind of permissions that account need to, need to have, you can click on how to grant access. It will ask you a couple of the questions. Uh, I want to use the existing account. Uh, Yes, I do. I want to use the, the additional features and uh, yes, I do. So like you can click yes, yes, yes. And then it will generate you um, uh, the details. Uh, you also can change the, your uh, response like no, I don't have, no, I don't have, no. So you can change those details later on or you can run the, uh, the questions one more time. So it will show you how to create the account. It will give you step-by-step -step, uh, instruction how to do everything. It will even generate you AWS policy that you can simply copy, paste to your AWS account. That's it, really simple. Um, once you add account, an account is, is visible within the system, you can go to the main dashboard. So main dashboard is basically the summary of everything that you have, summary of your cloud cost spending. First that you see is basically a map, map with the regions, the regions where, where you have some of the resources. As you see, some of the regions are marked as, as blue, which is active, means that I'm using those uh, regions, I do have resources within those regions, and some of the regions are marked as red, which is semi-active. What, what does this mean? It means that uh, those region has some of the resources which are not used. So they are created but not used. It could be some leftovers, it could be volumes, it could be IPs. So it's like a total wasted money. It's created but not used. Uh, on the right side you, you have a billing summary which is the summary of your uh, cloud cost and the projection for this month. So for example for this month um, it, it basically projects that I will spend uh, $6.1 thousand dollars for this month. I can take a look on the last month. Last month it was 5.2, almost 5.3 K dollars. Uh, or I can take a look on like last 30 days. And it's divided per region as you see. As you see, majority of the cost for my account comes from the North Virginia, US East, and um, third comes from Ohio. Also below that you see the total credit spent. I don't have a credits, but if I would, would do have credits, they will be shown here how much of the credits I already spent. On the left, you see the overall billing for the whole period. So from the November till today, this is November was the, the time when I created my account. And I see that it's basically growing, which is bad. And projection for this month saying that it will be even more than the previous months. So it's, it's bad. I need to, I need to uh, delete their unused resources and I definitely need to apply all the recommendations in order to save money. Then on the right you, you, you see this, your savings. Your savings basically uh, show, show you how much of the money you already saved. 
So I already saved almost $5,000. For the current months, I already saved uh, $1.6,000. And then it's divided by the services, which help me to save money. I see that all of my savings are coming from the feature, from the service, which is called Cloud City. And we will talk about the Cloud, cloud City a little bit later, later on. And nothing is, is saved from the right sizing or from the spots. We also will talk about those features. On the left, you see the cloud usage, which is basically how much of resources do you have? Uh, like I have three databases, 82 EC2s, three Kubernetes clusters, 188 EBS volumes, 19 VPCs in total, and so on, 10 snapshots, um, and so on. Also, you see some CloudWatch global, like uh, do you have any like alarms, uh, basically nothing. I have some insights. This is the performance and security insights. It could be like mm, some user didn't change the password for too long, or uh, I have a black hole opened, or so, like or some security group is allowing uh, all the ports. Uh, something like that will be displayed in the insights. Um, then I have IAM resources, how many of users, groups, and so on. And cloud spanning health basically shows me how much of my resources are currently running. So I don't have running EC2s, but I have six Kubernetes Kubernetes is running. Uh, all of them are on the Cloud Sita, which is good. And we will talk about this feature right now. So the Cloud Sita, what the Cloud Sita is. Cloud Sita is the, um, is the feature that uh, gives you ability to uh, control the state of your resources. Mainly it's uh, computer sources, it could be like EC2, databases, EKS, auto-scaling groups, uh, Redshift, uh, whatever is, uh, uh, is related to the computer sources will be displayed here. And what you can do with that? You can control the state, so you can shut it down or you can start it up. And also, you can create policies. Policies is like a, uh, uh, is like a schedule. I will create one. Let's call it night shift, night, night shutdown. And for example, I don't want to keep my uh, Kubernetes clusters up and running during the night. There is no point for me for that. This is uh, no point for that. So I can add resources. And for example, I want EKS. I see I have three different node pools of my node groups of my EKS. I can mark all of them. Can click save and after that I can after that I can choose uh, like when I want to shut them down when they when I want to start them up so for example I want to do something like that even you know what uh, Saturday the whole day Sunday the whole day should be shut down and during the working days, it should be up and running only during the normal working hours. Let's say it should be running only from 10 a.m. till um, 8 p.m. And basically, the platform says that my estimated savings is going to be $1.1 thousand dollars per month if I will be shutting down or keeping keeping up and running only during the working hours those uh, two node groups. So then I can. I can uh, specify where to send a notification about the um, uh, policy and then I can I can save that's that's it really simple once you once you done that uh, the uh, once you done that the resources that are um, assigned to the policy will be described or displayed within the tab called scheduled so then scheduled I will see all the resources that are that are applied or touched to one of the policies and uh, so I see those resources I see their current state and also I see how much of the money those policies saved me money for the current months and so on what else I can do with that for example I have I have uh, um, a node group or a cluster that I don't want to to be shut down today because I'm planning to work uh, uh, with this node group. Or for example, I want to work with this node group during the weekend. So I can click on a, on a policy and I can pause the policy. And it's basically asking me for how long I want to 
to pause uh, the policy. So for example, I want to pause it for two days or maybe I want to pause it forever um, and then I will need to go back to the system and uh, manually enable it again or I want to pause it till some specific date and time. So for example, I want to pause it till like Monday, I don't know, like 8 a.m. Click save, done, that's it. And then you have a mark that policy for this resource was paused manually. It will continue work by touch policy only on Monday at 8 uh, in the morning. That's the cloud, cloud sitter. What else? Let's take a look on uh, cloud view. So cloud view gives you a list of all of your resources. Basically displays all of your resources per, per region. So currently I have region Ohio selected. There is a drop down menu. I can take a look on all regions. By the way, those red regions, we, I show you on the map that I have some of the regions that are red, which has some of the resources, but they're not used. So let's take a look what those resources are. Tokyo. At Tokyo, I see that I have KMS. I have some keys within the KMS. And inside the environment, I see VPS. Within the VPS, one VPS. Within the VPS, I have the uh, road table. I have a few subnets. Uh, internet gateway and that's it so basically I have a VPC few subnets internet gateway and KMS and the keys and that's it so definitely it's a leftover from something then it's need to be removed because it's spending some some amount of money uh, let's get back to Ohio because it has some of the resources so for example what I can do I can expand the environments again I can expand VPC and within the VPC I see the load balancers. I can click details. I can take a look, uh, take a look on the uh, the ID or DNS name of the load balancer. I can take a look on uh, what listeners um, enabled for this uh, uh, for this load balancer. What security groups are applied, subnets and so on. So I can take a look on details. Also, I see there is a KS cluster attached to this VPC, so I can expand it. The CKS cluster consists of two node groups. Again, I can click on uh, details. I can take a look on uh, what the current state is. So it's running. Uh, I see it's uh, it's spot. It's a spot group. Um, I see uh, what's the settings like. It's uh, maximum capacity is 60, desired capacity is 50. Uh, also, um, let's. I see there is a CKS node group that I can expand. So let's expand it. And I see that within this EKS uh, node group, I have the auto scaling group. Again, I can click on details, can take a look on uh, what it is, uh, how much of the instances or settings are, are set. I can take a look on the tags. I can add the tags right from here. I can add additional tag, can save it. Also, I can save the whole list to the Excel file for the further analysis. What else? Um, we have the cloud map. So cloud map, cloud map is basically the architecture diagram of your resources. Um, so I see all of my resources on diagram. This is an interactive diagram. Everything is clickable. So I can, for example, click on this um, spot instance. I can take a look on the price against state type M5D large, what the current IP, what's the public IP, what kind of the ports are open, uh, what the subnet is used, VPC and so on. I can take, take a look on what kind of the volumes are attached. Again, the price of those volumes. Uh, I can do some actions with the volume. So for example, I don't want to have this volume. I want to remove this volume. I can click on actions, remove volume right from here, from the, from the system. And again, it's per region. And again, I can save it to PDF. We'll go next is the CloudNet. CloudNet is basically the same. It's a architecture diagram, but from the network perspective, from the VPC, subnets, internet gateways, and a NAT, NATS perspective. So let's take a look on it. Again, I have this, my EKS dev VPC. I see there is a, there is a, a NAT gateways, internet gateways attached to it. Uh, I see there are a couple of different load balancers. There is even internal load balancer. Again, I can take, everything is clickable. Again, I can take a look on details, on listening ports, on tags, and so on. And I see the correlation between different uh, services. So I can see the network map. 
And again, I can save it as, uh, as PDF. Uh, what else? Uh, billing. Billing is more in-depth information about your cloud, uh, cloud costs. Uh, here you can, you can do uh, filtering, you can, uh, you can display it as a chart, you can take a look on uh, some specific period of time, uh, like uh, monthly, for example. Uh, for example, show options, show me credits. Um, and for example, um, let's do filter. Uh, for example, show me only instance types, which is CD, C5D large, apply filter. Yeah, I do have some of them. The price is around, in February it was around $100 in March. Um, it's pretty much the same. They're pretty much the same. So we can play with the filter. So it's like more in-depth um, uh, analytics about your cloud costs. So for example, service. Let's take a look on how much, um, I don't know, KMS. Yeah, this is the price for my KMS. It's less than $4 per month. And it's pretty much the same for the last four months, which is good. It's not growing. Um, or, uh, I don't know, let's take a look on um, just uh, RDS. Yeah, Amazon Relational Database Service and apply. And this is the price for my database. So I see that uh, it basically growing for the last month in February, it was uh, 320. Uh, and uh, the currently for this month, the estimation says it's going to be a little bit less than previous months, but again, in total, it's going to be around $300 per month for this month. Yeah, so this is the overall billing. What else you can do with that? You can go to the budget and you can set a budget limit. So I can create a limit saying that, for example, if uh, my cloud cost hits like $1,000, $10,000, doesn't matter, Please send me a notification. I don't, I want to know when I will hit some some specific um, specific limit. And it can be per account, it can be per region, uh, per month or per week, including tax or excluding tax, and and so on. So you can play with that. What else? Uh, right sizing. Right sizing is a, a good feature. Let me let me show you how it looks like. So right sizing is basically a feature that is trying to, uh, we have a machine learning algorithm underneath that is trying to understand understand what the current usage of the of the resource and is trying to, to give a recommendation uh, what to do with that resource. So for example, I have the EC2 instance, which is the couch base version five. And then um, the current type is M4 4X large and the usage is 36%. This is what the machine learning is basically calculated, that the current usage is, is 36%. And um, the platform basically recommends that change it to M4 2X large, so make it two times less uh, um, powerful. The usage will become 72%, but you will start saving $290 per month just on this machine. And you can expand it will give you a couple of different options. So for example, I don't want to have a 72% of usage, of CPU usage, I want to have 55%. And then I can go to R5, 2X large, it will be a little bit less uh, of savings, but again, it's $214 per month. And I can choose it and I can basically click modify and I can apply right from here. That's it, you see it was like 16, and vCPUs is going to be eight vCPUs, same amount of, of memory. So I can ch change it right from here. And uh, in total, it basically says that if I will apply all of the suggestions, I will save $4,300 just by changing the, uh, the instance types. Yeah. So this is the, the right sizings. Now let's talk about spots. So what the spots are? This is the, the feature that gives you ability to basically convert your regular EC2 instances to spot instances. Uh, our um, platform uh, preserves the IP address, preserves the volume of the, of the EC2 instance, 
um, and all the details of the of the instance. So let's um, let's assume that I have a database which is which is um, created within the EC2 instance. It's installed inside the EC2 instance, and everything's working fine. And I know that this EC2 instance isn't used like 24 and 7. It's like for a dev uh, for dev environment, and I want to convert to a spot instance because I want to save some of the some of the money. And um, uh, if I will convert it from here, from the platform, what it will do, uh, it will basically will save the volume, it will create a snapshot of the, of the machine, it will um, uh, um, save the security group, or it will save the IP address, and then it will create the, the spot instance within the same volume, same type, it will uh, uh, assign the same IP address, the same load balancer, so everything will stay the same as it was before, except it will become a spot instance. Very easy to do. I just can click on spot, and uh, that's it done. And uh, I see what's the what's the current cost, what's going to be the estimated cost, and how much of, uh, of the money I will save if I will convert it to a spot um, to a spot instance. Um, also, you see that some of the spots um, uh, there is a button called manage. Um, what what does it mean? It means that uh, this instance is already a spot. It's a spot fleet or it's a spot instance, but it's not managed by uh, by the Prophecy, uh, Prophecy Labs platform. And uh, I can click on manage and Prophecy Labs will take care about the, uh, about this spot instance. Uh, what, the, what the benefits of doing that? So basically, the uh, Prophecy Labs uh, algorithm underneath uh, we'll um, take care about creating a new spot instances and machine learning will uh, uh, try to understand what's the best time to basically create a new spot instance and and uh, remove the previous one. Uh, so it's trying to, to minimize the downtime uh, as much as possible. That's what the manage uh, basically uh, does. Yeah. What else? We have... Um, Waste Manager. So Waste Manager basically is a collection of recommendations. It shows you uh, totally wasted money. It's like a, it's waste. Uh, for example, uh, uh, it, it says that we have a right sizing recommendations. Uh, so basically, I should go to right sizing. We already take a look on that. Also, it says that I have three unattached volumes, and um, here is the volume ID. So basically, it's it's again it's totally wasted money. I have volumes which are created but not attached anywhere, so just paying for those forms, and that's it. Same for IP addresses. I have 21 IP addresses which are created, but not attached anywhere, and I am paying for those IP addresses. Again, it's totally, totally wasted money. Same for inactive regions. So I have inactive regions um, which are created, but not used. Um, again, it's, it's totally wasted money. So this is the waste manager feature. Then I have um, reservation. You know that within the AWS, you have a possibility basically to pay um, advanced. You can pay for one year or you can pay for three years. It's like a commitment. If you will do that, uh, the price per resources will be lower. Um, but the, the process of uh, choosing what kind of uh, commitment you need to go with is really complicated. There are a lot of different options. Um, we try to automate this process. Again, we create an algorithm and uh, um, and try to simplify this process as much as possible. You have a wizard option. You click on it. It's asking you seven questions. I can launch it. So let's get started. Do I want to resell my EC2 instances? Let's say no, I don't want. Do you want to tenant EC2 instances? No, I don't want to tenant my instance. Do you want to change EC2 region? Um, let's say I have a database, so I don't want to change it because I need to be within the same region as my application. Do you want to change EC2 availability zone? Yeah, I don't care if, if the availability zone will be changed, that's fine. Do you want to change EC2 type? No, I don't want to change EC2 type. I want to stay within the same as is currently used. Do you want to change EC2 family? No, I don't. Do you want to change operation system? Of course not. Um, and wizard complete. So I can click on go to recommendations and it will generate the recommendations. So I see that uh, it basically recommends me to go with the 
EC2 instances to a saving plan, uh, different uh, EC2, uh, EC2 types. Um, here is the on-demand price. Here is go what's going to be the price with the discount. So it's a significant uh, uh, reduction. Uh, also, I can play with the payment option, um, like one year, three years, uh, paying upfront or partially and upfront, let's say three years, and I can again apply. Again, it will generate me the recommendations. Uh, I can take a look on them. So for example, for Elastic Cash, it says that recommendation is basically to go to reserved instance. I will need uh, to commit for uh, four, four instances. This is the type. Uh, the price was $756 and uh, with, the, with the discount it's going to be almost half, it's even more than half, it's like 55%, it's $340. And uh, at the end I can see what my total, so my total monthly savings if I will go with all the recommendations going to be 53%, I will start saving almost $4K per uh, month. There is no apply button at the moment, there is only dry run. Uh, but in future, uh, there is going to be apply button and you will be able to apply all of the recommendations just, just from here. Uh, yeah, what else? Uh, there is a feature called uh, Cloud Guard. So Cloud Guard is the performance and security recommendations. Um, like performance recommendations, for example, instance time uh, type is from previous generation. So I have a couple of the instances which are using the instance type from a previous generation. For example, uh, M5 versus M5A. M5A is more modern uh, instance type and usually it's even cheaper than the previous generation. So it basically gives a recommendation to uh, change my instance type. From the um, security perspective, I have uh, uh, user accounts which didn't change their key for too long. Too, too long is basically 90 days, three months. Uh, from performance, I have deprecated services, 78 of them. So I still use the classic load balancer for different services, which is bad. Classic load balancer uh, already not supported by AWS. I need to move to ELB or ILB. Um, so yeah, that's what I will need to do. It's a lot of them. Then I have the account manager. You already saw that. This is the way where you, this is the place where you add the accounts. Also have a Teams. Uh, teams, uh, this is the, the place where I'm adding the, uh, the users or invite, inviting the users. So basically here's, here's how it's working. Uh, the person who adds the account, basically an owner of the account, an owner of the account can, can invite other members, uh, members, uh, to the team, basically to, to this account. So I can click on add new um, member and I have a couple of options. I can give him a role like a user and then I can granularly set the permissions. So for example, uh, they can take a look, this person can take a look on architecture with edit mode, so not only read mode, billing or billing like cloud sitter. Cloud sitter, you remember, the, this is the feature that gives you possibility to shut down resources. So let's say I want to, uh, keep it only as a read mode uh, without the edit mode. Then I click read, done. Or I can give the admin access, which basically full permissions. And the last but not least is logs. Logs is basically audit trail. It shows who and what did within the system. It also shows, shows what the system uh, uh, done. So for example, uh, I see that the activity type policy, uh, some resource was paused, it was paused by this user and one, another policy was created, uh, another resource was started and so on and so on. So basically I see the uh, audit or trail log, who did what within the, within the platform.